Hello everyone, welcome. In this video, we will see EVPN VXLAN functionality in Ognos. The topology contains simple class fabric with unnumbered interfaces and the BGP peer groups. We will also see VPN formed with you know multiple different VLANs mapped to it. And we will see VPN multi homing functionality in this demo. Let's quickly jump into the topology configurations. In this demo, we have configured all the spines in the autonomous system 65004, and all the leaps are in 65001. Since we have used only unnumbered interfaces, only loopback IPs have been configured in all these devices. So the leaf one has been configured with 101.111. Similarly, leaf two is with 102, leaf three is with 105, spine one with 103 and 104. We can see. We will quickly check the configurations. They are in leaf one. So I have connected with the screen utility. So we can see that leaf one, leaf two, leaf three, spine one, and spine two have been connected. Right now I'm in uh, leaf one. So let's see the running config of the BGP. So since we have used the BGP unnumbered more, so we can see that 55 and 56 have been connected to the two spines and two sp interfaces are part of the spine peer group and the autonomous system is configured is 65001 this is for the IPv4 unit cluster similarly for the EVPN also we would have activated the spine peer group as we did it in IPv4 let's check in leaf 2 The configuration would look similar, only the router ID would differ. So here we have the same autonomous system number configured and the interfaces are XC32 and 9, part of the peer group. Okay, and in the address family IPv4, we have activated the spine group. Similarly, in the EVPN address family, we have activated the spine group. So the similar config would exist even in leaf 3 also. Yes. So here we have 25 and 22 as part of this peer group. Let's check the config in spine 1. Here also the VTEP group has been formed so that all the three leaves have been connected to this particular group configured within this group and this particular have, group has been enabled under the IPv4 address family also in the EVPN address family. Similarly in the spine 2 <coughs> the VTEP uh, peer group has been configured and all these three interfaces are part of this uh, VTEP peer group. So this particular peer group has been activated in the IPv4 cast and EVPN address family. Let us verify the underlay config. Here we can see that the self route is connected route on the loopback interface which has been configured. And we are able to reach the other VTEP, which is uh, leaf 2, 102 via ECMP path, both XC55 and 56, which are connected to spine 1 and spine 2. Similarly, we are able to reach leaf 3 with the two interfaces. So here we can see that ECMP has been formed for both the leaves. Similar thing would happen even in the 
split to we can see that the leaf 2 can reach sorry i'm in leaf 3 so we can see that leaf 1 and leaf 2 we can reach via ecmp parts now i am in leaf 2 i can see that the leaf 1 i can reach via ecmp path via both the spines and uh, leaf 3 also i can reach via ecmp path now let us check the vxlan configuration with simple command we can check the config of this yes here we can see that we have enabled the vxlan and multi homing is enabled and we are using the loopback ip as a reachable ip we have configured vnid 2001 with the ingress replication means bound traffic could be replicated to the other vtips and with the inner vad disabled so this will strip off the vlan in the traffic okay. so we have connected uh, via an access interface created on a po10 port channel interface with the vlan 201 if we see the interface configuration of the po10 so we would have configured with the esi system mac evpn system mac so this will end up forming the esi let us similarly check the configuration on the leaf tool. Here, in a similar way, we can see the VXLAN multi homing is enabled and we have used the loopback IP as uh, the VTAP IP. So, here also the same VNID has been configured. And uh, we can see that the PO interface has been mapped, which is a multi homing. So here we are using the LACP MAC with this the ESI information we derived. We also have a single home to interface which is connected over here. So which we would be using to showcase the traffic as well. In case of leaf 3, we have We have only one single interface which is a single home to interface okay. so here also we can see that we have used a different VLAN 1201 so whereas in uh, leaf 2 we have used 201 we also have a different VLAN 211 so all these would be communicating with each other let us see how the tunnels have been established. Some of the show commands we will see, you know, whether everything is running smooth or not. Okay. So here we can see that the VXLAN tunnels have been established from 101, which is a local IP, to the 102, which is a leaf 2 and leaf 3. Similarly, we can see in here in leaf 2 we have a tunnel towards the leaf 1 and leaf 3 here also we have from leaf 3 to leaf 2 and leaf 1 tunnels have been installed so quickly if we see the show bgp summary so we can see that you know on two interfaces so the bgp neighborship has been established for ipv4 and similarly for the evpn neighborship we can see this 
for the evpn neighborship we can see that you know the total number of pixels received so the ed route mac ip route multicast and the esi prefix route so we can individually see that you know how many routes have been received this is within the bgp context so here we can also see along with this VXLAN configuration. So the EVPN L2 VRF1, which is a MAC VRF. Here we can see that the MAC VRF, which is mapped to the VNI for BGP learning. So we have created a MAC VRF for this with the rd and row targets have been configured similarly in the leaf 2 we can see that you know the rd is different but the row target will be the same as in the leaf one Similarly, in the leaf three, also we can see that RD is different, but the route target would remain same. So this is about uh, you know we are saying uh, the VXLAN tunnels. Right and uh, we will also see how how the we will also see how evpn mac learning happen so here we can see that some of the macs have been learned on the local esi Okay, and uh, some of them I could have been learned from the remote. Here we can see that you know the Mac has been learned from which we did. So we are in leaf one, we are seeing that you know the particular Macs have been learned from the leaf three. So similarly, we can see that uh, some of the Mac could be like a dynamically learned, and some of the Mac could be. You know, statically configured as well so here we can see that this particular mac we have configured it as a static so hence we see it as a static keyword for this let us verify the traffic from the switch we are receiving the 350 packets so this is the member interface and on the network side, we are sending 150 and 200 with the load balancing. Similarly, we are receiving from these pines 300 and 250 packets, so which we are sending as a 550 packets towards the switch. Let us see on the leaf 2. Here we can see that we are receiving 650 packets from the switch and we are sending out 300 and 350 towards two spines. Similarly, we are receiving 250 from one spine and 200 packets from the other spine. So we are sending it out on the PO switch. Let us see in leaf 3. So here uh, we are receiving packets from the switch interface which is XC34. We are receiving 1000 packets and we are sending equally to both these spines. Similarly from two spines we are receiving 500 and 500 and we are sending out the 1000. 
packets towards the switch. To do the load balancing of the traffic, we are using more number of Mac. Okay, so here we can see that you know the MAC addresses learned locally or remote. So we can see that several local and remote routes and remote routes are with the reference of ESI. Let us see the ESI. So in this command, we can see that uh, the ESI has been configured on leaf 1 and leaf 2. So this information will be same across all the VTIPs. Here we can see that we have a local access interface as well, just below that. So even in a leave one, we can see that the ESA has been configured on PO10. So this completes the demo for today. So in the next videos, we will look into more into Mac table, ARP cache, ND cache, and even we will see the Mac movement cases. And in the next videos, we will see the IRB functionalities. Thank you.